When trying to explain the Calvin cycle with all the chemicals and stages, it can get quite complicated. So in this video, I will first go through the stages and the names of the chemicals involved in the reactions. And in this case, the number of carbons will not initially balance. But then I will repeat the process, including the coefficients to balance the number of carbons throughout the cycle. We begin the light independent stages of the Calvin cycle with ribulose bisphosphate, otherwise known as RUBP, which is a five carbon molecule. The RUBP combines with carbon dioxide to initially form a six carbon molecule. However, the six carbon molecule is unstable and therefore breaks up and forms a three carbon molecule glycerate three phosphate. This stage is referred to as carboxylation of RUBP and uses the enzyme Rubisco. In the next stage, the glycerate three phosphate becomes another three carbon molecule known as triose phosphate. In order to convert glycerate 3 phosphate to triose phosphate, ATP is required and breaks down into ADP. In addition, it is here that we use the NADPH from the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis. The NADPH is oxidized into NADP. The electrons released from this oxidation are gained by the glycerate 3 phosphate in the process of forming triose phosphate. Therefore, this is reduction of glycerate 3 phosphate. Of the triose phosphate, some of it is removed from the cycle, while the rest of it is used to continue the Calvin cycle. That which is removed from the cycle is ultimately used to form glucose, which is our primary objective in photosynthesis. The rest of the triose phosphate is used to regenerate RUBP so that the Calvin cycle can continue. This again requires ATP, which is broken down into ADP. And so the cycle continues with carboxylation of RUBP using Rubisco, reduction of glycerate 3 phosphate, followed by glucose production and regeneration of RUBP. So at this point, you might have noticed the carbons are unbalanced as you have a 5 carbon RUBP joining with 1 carbon to make a 3 carbon glycerate 3 phosphate. With the blue circles representing the carbons, I'll now repeat the Calvin cycle using coefficients to balance the carbons. There are many ways to balance the Calvin cycle, but we'll start here with six molecules of RUBP and six molecules of CO2. This gives you a total of 30 carbons in six five carbon RUBPs. And you would have a total of six carbons in six CO2s therefore giving you 36 carbons in total when these two are combined. Ultimately, after the six carbon molecule breaks down, we end up with 12 three carbon glycerate three phosphates. This balances out given that we had 36 carbons available. When the glycerate three phosphate is reduced into triose phosphate, since triose phosphate is also a three carbon, it stands to reason that there would be 12 of them. Now we can see how two triose phosphates go on to form glucose. Since triose phosphate is a three carbon and glucose is a six carbon, two triose phosphates would form one glucose molecule. The remaining 10 triose phosphates stay in the Calvin cycle and are used to regenerate RUBP. This again balances the carbons. This is because 10 triose phosphates, which are three carbons each, is 30 carbons total. Six five carbon RUBPs is also 30 carbons total. So now with the coefficients, we can see that at each stage of the Calvin cycle, the number of carbons is balanced. 